Hi, this is Joey O'Neill from Sound Systems Incorporated and from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And currently we are at Unity Free Will Baptist Church in Johnsonville, South Carolina, where we've just completed <clears throat> doing an entire sound system installation and video with video monitors and camera. The purpose of this video is just to give you a brief, short overview of how we've set the mixer up to accommodate the church in this situation. We've decided to use the Behringer X32, a very nice digital mixer. The beauty of this mixer, it allows the church to do presets and should everything pro work properly, then they'll be able to recall at any time a particular setting. <clears throat> I'm gonna give a brief overview because we're doing more extensive training for the church personnel, but I'll just uh, go through it and see, see how, what we've got going on here. All right, with the Behringer X32, the, this is the input section, which means microphones and inputs, live microphones, wireless microphones, stage plates, etc. And then this, this is the output section of the mixer. So the input section is set up in three stages. And one important feature about a digital mixer is should you wish to make adjustments on any device, you have to purposely select that particular channel. And I'll give you an example. First of all, I want to go through the inputs. If I push this button to the top, it says CH1 through 16, which means channels 1 through 16. When I push that button, then the channel numbers across the console become channels 1 through 16. We currently have the pulpit mic plugged into channel 1. Channel 2 and 3 are actually in a box underneath the pulpit, and I have an additional line pulled there that we have tied into channel four, but we're just calling it a spare. It's not hooked up because we don't know if they want to use it for something down the road. Channels five, six, seven, and eight live in another box close to the privacy railing by the choir. And then nine, 10, 11, 12 are additional stage inputs on another box, again, by the privacy railing right in front of the choir. We currently have a live mic in the congregation, and the purpose of that live mic is solely to feed our recording system. We're making, uh, we have a camera installed, and we're recording onto a DVD and a DVD recorder, obviously. So that live mic does not go into the sound system anywhere and does not see the speaker system, but it does feed the DVD recorder, and we have independent control for that. That microphone is currently in channel 13. Channels 14, 15, and 16 are extra, and they do not have lines pulled from the stage. We set those up as extras, so if someone at the sound booth needed to plug something in locally, then they have channels 14, 15, and 16 left over. So again, pulpit's in one, live mic is in channel 13, and then any other number on the mixing console corresponds with the number in the stage boxes up on stage. It says channel three, channel two, and vice versa, and so on and so on. If I plug the next button down, then my readouts on my screen say wireless one. It starts at channel 17. Again, that's channels one through 16. Push this button, now it becomes channel 17 through 32. Channel 17 on the far left here says wireless one, wireless two, wireless three, all the way, for, all the way through to wireless eight. The church purchased eight wireless systems. For example, this is a handheld uh, SM58 BLX uh, system that has number five on it. This is a standard wireless. One button turns the unit on. A green light indication comes on telling me that the microphone is live and that I can speak into it or I can touch the button again and it will mute or I can hit it, I mean, I'm sorry, you hit the button again and it just turns it off. Double A batteries, standard uh, cartridge on the inside and uh, standard batteries, wireless mic clips included with it. If you notice, this says wireless number five, and this says wireless number five. In addition to eight handhelds, we also provided the church with eight lavalier packs. So in case they'd like to have a gospel sing Sunday morning, they could have handheld microphones, but we're gonna do a, a play uh, that Sunday evening, and we're gonna use lavaliers for doing the uh, Lord's Supper or something like that. Well, this is a standard omnidirectional lavalier pack that works with the same receiver. The key is you cannot use wireless five belt pack at the same time that you use wireless five handheld, but you can use any other combinations. This is a lavalier uh, WL93 
Shure microphone tied to it. Uh, has the clip is removable, of course. This dot is the actual part, portion of the microphone, and that always has to be facing outward. So once I clip this onto my tie, the dot has to be facing outward in order to pick up. Belt pack's pretty straightforward. Opens up. I have AA batteries, of course, and it, again, it only has one switch to turn the unit on. So I flip the switch. I get a green light. Test one, two. Check test one, two. And I have audio for this system set up and ready to go. Again, you cannot use wireless handheld number five at the same time that you use lavalier number five. You have to use different combinations. So there are eight wirelesses already set up in, in the system. So channels 17 through 24 are wirelesses one through eight. Channel 25 right now is left open on purpose. And channel 26 are the two choir microphones suspended, obviously, over the choir. They are tied together in, into one channel because we're not going to use one microphone and not use the other. They, we tied them together to, to make things work better. Channels 27, 28, 29, and 30 are also left open for anything that would happen in the future. And then right now, channels 31 and 32 are set up for my music playback, which I'll get into in a minute. Uh, right now, those channels are muted because you can see the red lights. So what happens with the inputs is I have all the stage inputs, then I have all the wireless inputs, and then I have my music playback, which, which takes care of that. On this portion of the mixer, I have stage monitors, uh, obviously, on, on stage for, for people so that they could hear. Uh, monitor number one is called the choir monitor. Monitor number two is called the stage monitor. Monitor three, we've wired the stage for it on monitor three, but it's considered as an extra input, as an extra output going to the stage monitor, so we're not using that at this time. Bus four, or the fourth fader over here, is the amount of level that goes to the DVD recorder, and that provides sound to the DVD recorder so that we can make a DVD recording, obviously. And that also sends sound to the nursery, and then that also sends sound to the fellowship hall. Buses 5, 6, 7, and 8 currently are not being used. And, all, and then the last slide over here to the right is the actual master volume of the, of the audio system. So we can turn the entire master volume of the sound system up and down by using this fader here. We'll have some construction going on in the background, so we may pick up some different noises at different times. Now, let's get back to how do we control things. I said earlier that if you're going to do any adjustment on any type of microphone or any type of music, you have to select that particular channel. I know the church uses split tracks, so we've provided the CD player into two separate channels. That way they could have music on one side, vocals, vocals on the other side, uh, doing that for special plays and performances. If I need to make any adjustment up here in the top part of the mixer, and the top part I'm meaning the uh, phantom power, if I'd ha like to put a low cut filter, a low cut filter mainly, actually it's just what they call a bass roll off is what a low cut filter is. If I'd like to add some compression, if I have somebody that's really dynamic and, and into a microphone, very heavy where I might need to control them or give them some type of limitation where they're not distorting the sound system or overdriving the sound system. A compressor comes in very handy for doing that and is an excellent piece. This section here is called the equalizer, and once I select the channel that I'm dealing with, I can turn on and off the equalizer. This is the monitor section, and then this is called the stereo bus, which makes it go out to the, to the output to the speakers. So very important to remember on this mixer is that, let's say, for example, I'm speaking on wireless number five, and I would like to make some type of some type of control or change the microphone wireless microphone number five, then what I have to do is come over here to my wireless microphone number five, and I'm going to speak in a check test one, two, three, and you'll see the LED light indicating that I'm using, utilizing that channel. If I would like to make an adjustment on this microphone, turn it up, down, change the EQ, uh, anything, I have to I select that channel, and now anything I do up on the top part of the mixer relates only to wireless microphone number five. It can get a little tricky, and I've, I've, I catch myself sometimes just trying to grab something or go for a knob, and I, and I will be on a previous channel. So that takes a little while to get used to. Um, check one, two. This is wireless number five. Now I'm going to mute it, and then that goes away. Here's my music playback again, and let me start. 
So our music will start here in just a second. Like I said, we have nice line array speakers installed and some pretty nice subwoofers on stage. So our music sounds actually very, very good. All right, getting back into this section here, we know that that's channels 1 through 16, which are generally inputs on the stage. This is channels 17 through 32, which are primarily music playback and wirelesses. And then my next group is called auxiliary inputs. As it stands now, I have a DVD playing on the, on the DVD screen. So I have a DVD playing on the screen. Yes. Okay. I'm just finishing this recording here, and I'll, I'll be, give me just a couple minutes. Right now we're listening to uh, Bugs Bunny Roadrunner, and I'm going to tilt my going to tilt my back, and we'll see over on screen right on the house we we're playing uh, Bugs Bunny Roadrunner, and I have the audio for that DVD right in channels auxiliary groups. And now I can mute those. We're going to watch a DVD. We're going to have Vacation Bible School, anything like that. Or if we just want to watch a DVD related to the church service, we can put a DVD in a DVD player. And then these auxiliary inputs can be used for CD, phone, tape, what, whatever we want to get into the mixing console. And right now, the DVD player is an auxiliary, and that's an auxiliary five and six. And now we're watching Bugs Bunny Run Run, or listening to Bugs Bunny Run Run as we're watching it on the TV screen. All right, I'm going to mute that. Then the other inputs are USB inputs, and then the rest are effects or reverbs, and we'll get into detail for that in a while. All right, the one thing that the church is going to want to know is how do we provide sound to the stage monitors? If people are seeing this is a very musical church. They use a lot of soundtracks, and they use a lot of uh, uh, live, live music, uh, live soundtrack performances. So let's talk about uh, how do we get stuff into the stage monitors. Well, here's what happens. Bus one are the two monitors that are left and right of the choir mounted to the brick wall. That allows us to send anything through the mixer exclusively through those choir monitors, and they're labeled. It said, you might not be able to see it here, but it says choir monitors. Let's say that I want to take something and send it to the choir monitors. Well, here's, here's how we do it. Like I said earlier, you have to select what you want to change. So I'm going to hit select which means any changes I'm going to do are going to take place for my choir monitors. I want to hit sends on faders. Sends on faders means that anything I turn up in channels 1 through 16 or 17 through 32 is what will go through our choir monitors up on stage. All right, I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to make sure my CD's playing first. I'm going to unmute my CD player. That CD player is playing in the house system. I'm going to turn it down because I'd like to have music playing for the choir to hear. So here's what I do. Select the choir monitor. Select sends on faders. And now this tells me how much of that CD is playing exclusively through my choir monitors. I can increase it or decrease it, and I'm not affecting the house system at all, only because I'm dealing with the, with the choir monitors. Let's say that I would like to have my music soundtrack being played through the stage monitors. Stage monitors are a, uh, a full range speaker we have sitting on the stage and then a small hotspot by the piano. Everything kind of gravitates to house right, uh, stage left at this church. So we set up the stage monitors. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mute the choir monitors and I'm gonna select the stage monitors. When I hit stage monitors, sends on fader, that, that, number will, that button will flash telling you that's what you're controlling. And now the music that I turn up or down turns it up exclusively over in the stage monitor. Once I'm finished with that, I turn my sends on fader off and I'm back to where I was. So now I'm gonna mute the stage monitor. I've muted the choir monitor. I've muted the extra line just because we're not gonna use it. And if I would mute this, which is my DVD recorder, then there would be no sound going to my DVD recording. So I'm gonna leave that on at all times. Let's turn my music back up. And let's show you how to do microphones because that's going to be the biggest thing that the church is going to want to do is how do I get my microphone that I'm singing? How do I get my microphone back through the stage monitors so that I can hear something on stage? I'm going back to my wireless microphone number five. I made sure the lavalier pack number five was turned off. 
and I'm going to unmute. Check test one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Check test. So I'm using handheld uh, number five. And if I'm singing on stage, I want to hear this microphone through the stage monitor. So the stage monitor is monitor two, or I can send it through the choir monitor. If I'm going to sing a solo and the choir is going to accommodate me, here's what I do. I go to my choir, mo choir monitor first. I push sends on fader, and then I go to the microphone I would like to turn up on that. In this case, wireless number five. Check test two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now my voice is being transmitted through the, st through the choir monitors up on stage. I'm going to turn that down because I doubt we want it that much. And let's say that I want to come over here and I want to put wireless microphone number five through the stage monitor, which is where the music directors usually hang out and anybody performing with pre-recorded stuff. I'll hit select, which means now I'm controlling stage monitor two. Sends on fader, should be flashing, and now I can come over here to wireless microphone five, test one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I'm turning up my voice in the stage monitors up on stage. And I'm gonna bring that back down. That stays and does not change until I tell the board to do it on my own. All right, I'm gonna hit the sends on fader, which turns it back off. And now let's say that I'd like to have my music being played. I think, think we just covered that. But I didn't select. Sends on fader. And that much music is going through the choir box. That much music is going through the stage box. All right. That is a general overview of how the, of how the mixer is set up, I'm trying to make it concise and quick so it doesn't turn into a long video. And we're going to do more in-depth training with the church personnel. I'm Joey O'Neill at Sound Systems in Myrtle Beach, and we're at Unity Free Will Baptist Church out in Johnsonville. And we'll have further videos showing uh, other, other setups. Thank you.